the high school district. And that, that's possible because of the data team that provides us those numbers that are real numbers that represent real people so that our dropout prevention specialists can go and do their work. Um, I, I just think this is so meaningful for our, our entire district and our entire community. So I, obviously I could talk about this all day long, but thank you for your leadership and allowing us to continue this great work and driving it at, at the every. Um, someday we're going to get to your rest. Mm -hmm. If I may speak, I would really love to take credit for this. I mean, this, <laughs> this is just one more thing about this whole school district that makes us very proud. But, you know, from, from you guys on down, as the work is done, you, you, made, you made the school a great place to show up for. I mean, that's part of it, but the other part is the team that, that, that goes after the ones and says, hey, let's come back to school. This is really something to be proud of. Thank you. Yeah, well, good job. I see the chart. We got it done. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Moving on, uh, item 3.4, the CARES Desert Hunting. Ms. Thompson. Thank you, President Townsend, uh, Governing Board. Very excited to uh, turn this over to Lisa Anderson as the leader from this particular um, experience and her persistence and her relentlessness in uh, getting to the point that we are now with our with our CARES Act. Um, and I just want to publicly thank her. Um, thank her for putting up with me when I was stopping my feet and wondering why this was so difficult. And thank you for her expertise and grant funding. But Lisa, if you would please. Thank you. The Federal Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, also known as CARES, was signed into law on March 27, 2020. Included in the CARES Act was funding for elementary and secondary school relief, and that is known as ESSER, E-S-S-E-R. The ESSER grant is a one-time pandemic-related appropriation and not a part of ongoing funding for schools. Each school district was required to submit an application for the funding, and the district's allocation was based on their federal Title I funding allocation. So for the Yuma Union High School District, our, fund, our Title I allocation is around $3 million. So that, um, for the CARES Act, the ESSER money for Yuma Union was approximately $2.5 million that we were allowed to apply for, in which we did. Yuma Union teams, which included campus leaders and staff and district leaders prioritized the funding needs through three lenses. Um, the funding is very flexible in the use of the funding. If we were able to go back from March 13th and the expenses March 13th through, um, and this is a long timeline for the use of the funds through September of 2021. And so our teams looked at the, the funding and the budgeting and the needs through the three lenses. The first was relief. And that was from March 13th from the district school closures till the end of the school year, May 30th. And that was looking at the immediate needs um, to manage the school and the district closure. And items that uh, were prioritized for the grants were um, the loss in revenue from student nutrition and then needed technology for staff members while we were, uh, while our campuses were closed or school in our district so that our staff could work from home. The next lens that we looked at the, the funding was through preparation and prevention, um, addressing and stabilizing the disruption and preparing for safe school openings, as well as future health disruptions. And that's the work from probably June until current today that we're, we're um, prioritizing. This includes supplemental hours for staff that were not on contract to assist in planning, um, supplies, clean supplies, hand sanitizer, signage for our schools, PPE, um, such as masks, desk guards, gloves, and then technology, that's the hotspots and the service for the hotspots. Um, there were some welcome, they're teaching tablets for our math instructors while they're teaching during distance learning, and also WebEx. And then the last lens that we're looking at is recovery, so managing the ongoing recovery needs of our students and schools and um, Reimagining a safe school learning environment. So what, what are we going to need between now and through the rest of the school year to keep our school safe and, and welcome our students back? 
there any questions? That, that's amazing that you were able to capitalize and you received that much money. Very good job. And I'd like to thank uh, obviously our campus leaders and our district teams, Jay um, and his or um, Dan Dean and his team with YTC with the technology needs and being able to expedite the orders and, and get hot spots in place. We heard a lot of delays with, with laptops. And also Jay and Anthony. Um, Anthony has been behind the scenes in the ordering, and you're going to hear from them next. So a big thank you to them also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item 3.5, PPE and campus readiness for reopening. Thank you, President Kaplan, Governing Board. Um, again, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Rienza in a moment, but um, of course, I want to say my two cents worth first. I uh, just couldn't be prouder of the work that has gone on uh, in the facilities area, and literally March 13th started um, this work because of um, having solid budget foundation. Uh, and Jay working hand in hand with Mr. Bianza and the CFO Cornery. Um, I just feel very honored to have this team and very um, blessed to be in the position that we are in now. And Mr. Bianza, would you please go ahead and introduce your team? Well, since March 13th, we knew we would come back eventually and you know get back to whatever normal or new normal may be, but we had staff coming back to campus even sooner. And we wanted to make sure that they had a safe environment where they, they could be productive and also we'd be working towards when students do return and we can provide them with the safest possible environment as well. So our executive director, Jay Munoz, and his staff were tasked with preparing everything and being trained and researching the CDC and the Yuma County Health Department on the best procedures and how to uh, do what's called enhanced cleaning to make sure that our cleaning routines are appropriate to keep everyone safe on the campuses. Um, meanwhile, campus leaders generated uh, wish lists of what could be ordered. And I had to go and ask Lisa how to go about doing this. Ms. Anderson, uh, she just went through describing the uh, CARES Act and how monies were utilized. And she helped um, the team of Jay and Anthony Herrera um, get some procedures in place so the campus leaders could list what they needed and then we basically went through and decided as a team what needed to be ordered right away and what could be ordered for when students return. But if it wasn't for Jay uh, and Anthony, I don't think we would be in a position today where we'd have PPE in every room in our district, just like you have here in the boardroom. Um, you walk in any room, you'll find um, cleaning supplies, uh, sanitizer, wipes. They, they've done an amazing job. But if you go to the campuses, and I encourage everyone to visit the campuses, you'll, you'll see that it is a safe place for students and staff to uh, return to learning uh, in person. And um, without me saying any more, I'd like to invite Anthony and Jay up to um, discuss and share how they went about it. And Anthony's title is actually the campus business facilitator. And we pulled him as the other duties as assigned part of his contract and work agreement. And he's done an amazing job bringing organization and clarity um, to this whole process. Of millions and millions of dollars. Justin, can you make sure that your mics are green and please talk directly close into the mic so that everybody can hear you? Good evening. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank Anthony for all this hard work we've done for our district and our, and our students. You know, we were tasked with purchasing PP for the entire district. Anthony took charge of that. He purchased all the PP we're going to tell you about in a few minutes, and not only that, he directed the district. Uh, the delivery of all this PPE to the campus as well, and keep it in the, the same time keeping track of everything that's going on and our inventory. So, I think thank you for being part of our team, and I really appreciate your help. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, it was an interesting thing, uh, proposal when it came to me. Uh, they were just asking, you know, if this is something I'd be interested in. I said, why not? So we give it a shot, and it's been. Quite an experience, um, you know, getting meetings with everybody and make sure where everyone's got everything we need. But top priority was our kids' safety to come back, not just the kids, but also our staff. I wanted them to make sure they felt comfortable coming to school. And this was our top priority, honestly, because we're, we're already there. We're very good to go back to school. Yeah. 
So we could go ahead and start with the slide. Um, as you can see here, we have a uh, so far running tally of how many items, uh, PPE items we bought. We have one million one hundred forty-four thousand six hundred fifty masks right for the whole of the union. Or I'm um, sorry, district. <laughs> Um, we have 417,600 gloves, 17,702 uh, 17, wipes, 780 spray bottles full of disinfectant sprays, and we have 3,754 gallons of sanitizer ready for use in all throughout the campuses and district wide. We've used our, some of our local vendors, such as City Pest Control, um, Prison Health Brewery Company for the liquid hand sanitizers, and Foxworth uh, Gilbert for the um, safeguards, which come very handy. And so far, we spent at $844,218.45. Anthony is responsible for purchasing most of this stuff in the South. So, thank you, Anthony, once again. So, so our custodians have been trained to properly clean and disinfect our, our campuses and district office per C, CDC guidelines. Residents are going to be cleaned per CDC guidelines using EPA versus our household disinfectants. Areas that are areas are clean with clean and high touch surfaces such as doorknobs, faucets, and and um, surfaces as well. So, so it's, it's, uh, enhanced cleaning, additional disinfectant for high touch point areas such as countertops, door handles as well, completing the site the on each campus, all classrooms have an EPA and list registered disinfectant available to staff to disinfect high touch points as needed throughout the day. Training will be provided on the proper use and procedure of disinfecting and required PPE requirements. Campus custodial team are responsible to, to um, in the event of a COVID-19 case, to utilize industry and CDC to recommendations to through each uh, team to disinfect Areas. So this disinfecting our campus is that the district has purchased fall carpet extractors that serve as disinfectant sprayers, which allows us to disinfect an area at a faster rate with these machines that are shown on this side here. Currently our nurses stations are equipped with PPE items that have plexiglass barriers to protect both staff and students. They also have isolation rooms with windows on the doors now so nurses can monitor student health while maintaining a safe distance. So classrooms, like Ms. Sanderson said earlier, we have hand sanitizer, disinfectant spray, paper towels, washable rags, masks, gloves, wipes, whatever is necessary to keep the environment clean for our students and our staff, it's available in the classrooms. Same with our office areas, like lobbies, reception areas. We have the hand sanitizers, disinfectant sprays, paper towels, and washable rags, masks, gloves, wipes. They also have the sneeze guards and also the social distance signage. So, in addition, the district um, purchased portable hand sanitizer dispensers, which we be placed around five traffic areas on our campus and district. You know, the touch list, you just put your hand underneath it, and you get a small amount of disinfectant. Um, Sanitizer so you can wipe your hands. Currently, our inventory is being housed here at the district office and also the warehouse location. Uh, as we said earlier, we coordinate with campuses to see how their inventory is looking. And if they're running low, we can go ahead and resupply them with what they need. So, you know, faster delivery, that way we don't have to keep waiting on, you know, days on for delivery. At one point, our part of the district office looked like a, a warehouse with all this stuff we had there before, and then we sent it out to the campuses. So, any questions? Good job. So, once again, it's Anthony Sunny work that's made most of this possible, and I'm really grateful for that. You're impressive. Thank you. Thank you. We have a question from Ms. Kravitz. Ms. Kravitz. Thank you. I would like to applaud you all for having the foresight to keep our supplies stocked. I know that even hospitals the last few months have had a hard time keeping inventory. So great job. Thank you so much. 
Um, the question that I have is, do we still have ongoing orders that are going to happen throughout the school year? How is that being addressed? Yes, we're still going to, we're keeping track of how much we currently have. We are running tally. So if any campus looks low or even we look low here at the district, district office of our house, they have notified me and I go ahead and start contacting vendors to purchase some more supplies. Thank you. And lastly, I know that the students had said that they had felt comfortable cleaning their own desks. Is is that um, equipment and supplies that they are going to be used using to clean their own personal area being supplied by the district, or are the students supposed to bring it themselves? No, we, we supply that for every classroom, so that each student can feel comfortable disinfecting their own area. Yeah. Thank you. When I say that, I would also like to thank Mrs. Brianna and Diane for their help in this as well. They, they made a lot of this happen as well. So thank you both. Thank you for a good Thank presentation. You. Thank you. Moving on, safety committee annual report. Mrs. Thompson. Thank you, President County Governing Board. Um, we are excited about this, and the CFO brings money instead of holding holding it back for something important. She's going to pay it out tonight, so I will turn it over to CFO Gordy. Yeah, it is kind of nice to give money away for a change. <laughs> Better than being called CFO, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, as a reminder of the safety committees and how they were developed, we um, have used some of our insurance proceeds as we get them back throughout the year, and that's what funds these committees. And each campus has a committee, they're able to earn up to $10,000 a year. Um, so the way that they do that is they have uh, quarterly meetings, safety committee meetings at the campus, and that includes nurses, teachers, classified staff, security, um, an administrator, all those different folks, and they meet quarterly, and if they meet quarterly and they send their minutes to the district office, they get $500 for each quarter that they do that. And then also, once a semester, they're asked to do inspections of their campus. And so we have a form that was developed. Mrs. Anderson actually um, developed the form for them, and they go around and it's a different person each semester. And if they do that, they get $500 also um, for each one of those inspections. Then, if they are um, workers comp, for every month of workers comp that they don't have a claim, they get $300. So the incentive is to not have any workers' comp claims. If they go 12 months without getting a workers' comp claim, they get an additional $1,400. And then, on top of that, if they have the highest dollar amount of all of the campuses for the year, they get an additional $2,000. So, having said all of that, that's the way that it, um, they accumulate the money. So, Mr. Townsend, this is your photo op moment. <laughs> It could be any better. It could be. It could be all of you. Um, we will get started. So our first school is U of a High School. And it's a little smudge, but that's Mr. Brandon's fault. Because um, he carried the checks over here. But it is. So yeah. Mr. Fritz would come, come up and... Yes. Not Mr. Brandon's. <laughs> so forty two hundred dollars for that. Good job. Um, and next we have Cebola with forty one hundred dollars. Do you have 
$2,500. And in, yes, I know they're a smaller school, but they also get counted in the district office, counts against them for all their workers' comp claims and things like that as well. So, Recommendation for funding. We're hoping for it. 
and um, that's on December 9th. So coming up very quickly. That recommendation will then go on to um, the legislative approval process, you know, go into the governor's, and then uh, May 8th would be, May 3rd, somewhere right early May would be when the budget is adopted by the state. And then funding for the project would, would be uh, July 1st. And that's that big line on the right there. This has been a good drawdown for the next uh, um, essentially three years. So, you know, if all if we, if the funding lines up, we can stay on schedule and have the school open in three years. So, August, last August, you know, last month, three years from now, we'll have this thing open. So, that's really what the team is focusing on. And um, the remaining care topics. Any questions on that before we move off the schedule? Okay, Ryan. Okay, so I just wanted to start with a brief overview of what we were um, when, when we when we met last time uh, back in June. Um, we were picking up the master plan, which was done about nine months prior to that, um, and was really in earnest of looking at the site layout um, so that we can coordinate utility um, connections and. Um, Road connections for a city of Summerton Road Improvement Project that are currently ongoing. Um, we're looking at the campus layout for um, 1,600, 1,800 students um, and are aiming to kind of program and provide concept design for building to uh, go ahead and put some, put some numbers to um, for budgeting purposes. So at the um, at this point, we're still we're looking at the old the, the total build out of the entire campus. Um, so it, just to give you a little little bit of uh, orientation here, Cesar Chavez Drive is on the east side, on the right hand side, um, and Jefferson Street is up on the on the north. That's about a mile north of uh, Highway 95 that runs through Summerton. Uh, um, kind of. Starting from the right and moving left, uh, we've got a performing arts center that, that was uh, called out of the pack there. Um, a number of classrooms kind of on the uh, east side of, of the admin cafe um, block. Um, with a courtyard that's between those classrooms, that's really, we're thinking more of a social gathering space for students. Um, the cafe and the admin block each can reach out to a a uh, parking lot on the north and a parking lot on the south. The, the, the lot on the south is intended for student parking, and the lot on the north is intended for staff and visitors. Uh, so that really becomes the, the central hub of activity um, on the campus um, and becomes kind of a defined entry point for each of those two parking areas. And then to the left of that, um, we've got some CTE spaces and some classrooms with a uh, courtyard between those as well. And the thought there is that this becomes more of an active courtyard than a, than a social courtyard. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to really put the unique programs that are housed within those CTE spaces on display. Uh, and it's going to give them some outdoor work areas that might help give some exposure into those programs to the other students as they walk by. And then on the far left is the gym. Uh, we've got a, a complicated gym and an outdoor gym showing that at a different time. And then uh, stepping out just a, a little bit more in scale, looking at the, the total site, um, we've been working with our landscape architects and civil engineers to make sure that we're getting the optimum field orientation for each of the, the playing fields down there. Um, we've got a, a full football stadium with a uh, field house down there as well that we anticipate with we'll some athletic um, locker rooms, some uh, concession stands, and um, Possibly uh, the sportsman facility. And as always, when considering safety, um, when we're laying out a site, and one of the biggest safety concerns that we have in planning a high school is how are people circulating around the high school. Um, so we really try to separate buses from car traffic and then separate students and 16 year old drivers from parents, uh, parent drivers. So we have uh, three different ways that, that folks would be accessing the site. Uh, the buses kind of come down the road on the left-hand side there, um, completely separated from the students who are entering uh, from the middle, and then the parents um, and parent drop-off area uh, from the right all the way up to the top there. 
So now to hand it off to Gina here to get a, a few words that she wanted to say as well. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, just want to make sure that we are clear on um, some of the driving factors. And uh, you know, uh, the mantra for Yuma Union High School District is every, and that is about equity. Um, and when we talk about equity, it's equity of programming in this particular uh, case. And uh, the students in Summerton um, come to school knowing that they will have uh, not only unique programs that are driven by their desires and the need of the community, but that it would be equitable uh, in, in scope. And that is where we continue to go back to that, um, that part about how important the funding is, full funding, before we begin a project, because nothing would be worse than starting a school and never being able to complete it and have students in it because we don't have all of the programming. Yuma Union High School District offers so many different opportunities, and that's about programming, and that's about student future, and that's about equity. Um, so that is um, a huge piece and why we continue to drive for full funding from the uh, SFP. Safety is always the primary uh, focus. There's uh, you know, nothing more important than safety and security. So we are looking deeply into that. There's a special, um, special studies that are going on with that and Carmen and Brian and Bill and I have talked about this and we'll be bringing in different um, experts, if you will, to help us in, in this plan. And we know we know the need of the community is there, um, and the partnership is critical between the city of Somerset and Yuma Union High School District. So we're thankful that we're, we're on that right road, and uh, we'll be presenting to them as well uh, next Tuesday. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those now or comments. Can you go back? Can you go back? Okay. I'm looking at the football field and South County. I know it's soccer and baseball. I, I hope that football eventually kicks off. I think we need it, but I'm uh, looking at the, at the black line, which is a track, I imagine. Right? Now, that's, that's a little narrower than the soccer field. Is there any, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at to be able to be used as, as both football and soccer. So that um, the, the, the football stadium uh, does actually have a high school regulation sized um, uh, soccer field laid over it as well. So it, it does fit. We kind of made that, that field down there um, that's not part of the stadium a little bit bigger because we're using that in part, in part for retention. Um, but that's also a practice field, so we had some extra space there to make it a little larger. Okay, part of my question. Hopefully, football will get going in some of the assemblies. I wish, I hope, but eventually. But uh, yeah, soccer and baseball, that's that's what's going on right now. Thank you. Well, any other questions? I have a question out of curiosity. Are you seeing in your development and your planning where, um, because of going through COVID, that you're having to look at other things already built into the planning um, process? Is that started or? Yeah, you know, we're, we're just getting, I I realize I skipped a slide there. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just kind of getting into the inside of the building. Um, at, and we just had our first kickoff meeting with the district economic committee this morning. Um, so we are, we will be kind of uh, studying how that impacts the design in the space uh, here in the coming months, a uh, month or two. Um, but at this time, we've mainly been focused on uh, the site plan layout. Um, so we'll, we'll be delving into that here shortly. Okay, thank you. Hopefully it'll just be and I, I, I think it's important to, you know, to remind us all, because sometimes you forget where you were and where you, where you are now, right, how you got here, but um, we were able with the uh, transfer of property and the, the work from Summerton Elementary District, um, this actually is a complete change, so thank you, um, but we were able to fit the fields on our own property for you meaning high school district. So it has been an ongoing work because it was kind of done and then we we were able to uh, change that. So we appreciate the work of Summerton Elementary District in uh, their land development and swaps and we were able to benefit from that as well. And um, as far as, you know, another just to um, add to what Ryan said, 
Um, the, the biggest miss that we have right now is we're missing our students and their input, and we would already have had them into this particular aspect. So we're working at different creative ways to get them involved in Carmen, that's a, that's a huge priority for, for her. And uh, normally they would be shadowing students and going to schools and, and watching kids and talking with kids. So, so we will make that happen. It's just happening at a little bit different pace than normal. Any other questions or comments? I just want to add on to just it's a, a great opportunity to thank the voters that you know came out. Yes, yes. Sorry, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we're great. Thank you, Bill, and Carmen as well. So thank you. Exciting. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on, 3.8, Arizona State, State Seal of Arts Proficiency. This is Thompson. Thank you, President Townsend. I would love to turn this over to Lisa Anderson to introduce our Chief Academics Officer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Eric Brooks is our Chief Academic Officer, and he has been working with a team of fine arts instructional leaders, and they were made aware of the State Proficiency Seal, the Arizona State Seal of Arts Proficiency, and there's an application to that process, so they're going to share um, the work that they've been involved in. Mr. Brooks. And if I could just please remind people to speak closely and directly into the microphone so everybody can hear you. All right, good evening. And thank you for my wants to be here. Um, there are several different ways that students who graduate from high school can distinguish themselves currently. There is a seal of biliteracy, a seal of civic literacy, a seal of personal finance, and now there's a seal of art proficiency. So for our visual learners, Ms. Anderson, I have something that you'll appreciate. I feel it's a little foundation. list of high schools listed there who have all participated in this program and have the opportunity to receive this seal, receive this seal. As illuminated and probably tickling in your ears about the finance program, because I know in a recent fiery Friday report that we all received, it highlighted the work of our finance department and some of the great things that they did. How we saw uh, rules of engagement regarding how to enter school from our choir department. From our, music, from our music department, specifically our choir courses. So two of, of the teachers I have the honor and privilege of working with are with me tonight to talk a little bit more about the finance seal. So I introduce to you Ms. Jen Flory from Koba High School, Ms. Holly Hendricks from Seoul High School. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. This past May was the first year that students were awarded the Arts Proficiency Seal in Arizona. In the state, 58 schools participated in this program, and over 500 students were awarded the Arts Proficiency Seal. 
we would like to add the Cuban Union High School District and its students to this list. YUHSD and its schools have developed strong arts programs over the years, many offering advanced placement classes as well as honor societies. By adding the Arizona Arts Proficiency Seal, we'll be recognizing the high quality arts education the teachers are providing their students and providing additional opportunities for students to expand and express their artistic abilities. Each year, I have students come through my classes that have never danced before but develop a strong passion through their years of participation. I currently have a student who began as a freshman with no dance experience. She became a leader in my program and club, was inducted into the Honor Society her junior year, and is looking for the next opportunity as a senior. By providing the art field, she would be able to expand her creativity through the capstone project. She has an extremely creative mind, and the capstone would give her the ability to create with no boundaries. The capstone also gives the opportunity for, for her to take her knowledge of dance to the next level beyond the local campus and into the human community. She would be able to provide an opportunity for arts to the entire human community. Holly Hendricks at Cibola has similar students within her program that can benefit from this art field. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Brooks for our um, helping us with this, and more importantly, or especially not more importantly, I want to thank Jen because she called me this summer and said, hey, we got this great thing going, you know, what do you think about this seal? And I said, I don't want another gold star. Our kids don't need another gold star. And Jen did such a great job of explaining to me and all the other fine arts instructional leaders how this is not just some gold star that's gonna go on their diploma. This provides our student, the capstone project that they'll get, they'll undertake is a way for them to show their talents, the talent that we have in, at our schools. So I'm really excited about that. And I know that there are so many people um, here. Thank you for allowing us to present. You always support the fine arts, and I know you support the fine arts because I see you at our school events. So thank you for that. Um, just really excited to present to you tonight because this um, seal will give our students a distinction that when they're applying for um, opportunities, highly competitive opportunities, this is a way for them to stand out. In our little town, we don't have world-class uh, facilities, but we have a lot of people just like you who care about them. So we're going to give them every opportunity we can to stand out in Arizona. So I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening to us. And thank you for this opportunity. We, we appreciate it so much because our students are going to benefit from this at each school. So thank you. Are there any questions? No, this is exciting. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving on. Item 3.9, first read of policies and regulations. Uh, ACA, ACA that are sexual harassment, ACAA, ACAA that are Title IX. Sexual harassment, EED, business and personal transportation services. These are a first three um, new Title IX rules. Okay. Moving on, consent items. Ms. Thompson, we had in personnel there was a line we needed to pull and change. Yes, the date. and I'm sorry, I didn't get that number. If I could ask what number the uh, from the personnel, so we have a date change. From the fourth to the ninth. Yes, but the number of the ninety four. Ninety four. Ninety four. Number ninety four. Thank you. If we could it change from the fourth from August fourth or September. September fourth to September ninth, please. Okay. So, is there a motion to accept the consent consent items, with the exception of item four point two, line ninety four, which we'll do separately? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Gwen, second by Ms. Mellon to approve the consent items. 
with the exception of item line uh, item 4.2 line 94 is there any questions or discussion hearing that we'll proceed to vote all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries unanimously is there a motion to uh, amend line 94 item 4.2 line 94 changing the date from september 4th to september 9th Okay. No, to September 4th from September 9th. Which way is that? From the 4th to the 9th. From the 4th to the 9th. Okay. Who made the motion? That's what I moved. Okay, Mr. Gwynn. Okay. And second okay. by Ms. Mellon. Motion on the floor is, is to amend item 4.2, line 94, to change the date from September 4th to September 9th. Is there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to item five, action items five point one consideration to accept donations. I will read them when I get to it. Okay, the donations are to Healer Ridge High School. Gila Ridge Basketball Booster donated $1,000 to the Gila Ridge High School Boys Basketball Program to purchase uniforms. The Hot Football Booster donate, Club donated a one 20-foot hand storage container, including concrete pads and leveling, to the Gila Ridge Football Program. The estimated value of the donation is $3,956. At Copa High School Donors Choose.org donated supplies and materials the Copa High School Special Services Department for their science curriculum. Estimated value of the donation is $353. Ms. Amy Seeley donated art supplies to the Copa High School Art Program. Estimated value of the donation is $16. At Yuma High School, Mr. Luna donated a tow power coupler lock to be used at the Yuma High School on the Yuma High School marching band trailer. Estimated value of the donation is $35. It is recommended that the governing board accept the above listed donations. Is there a motion? I move that we accept the above listed donations with um, grateful butt. Second. Motion made by Ms. Mellon, second by Mr. Gwynn. Is there any? Yes. Yeah. I thought Ms. I Barrett. saw, I'm so sorry. I thought I saw that the United Way had donated um, a large amount of sanitizer. Did we? Do that last month? I'm a, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Yes, that was that last month's agenda. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay, then we'll proceed to vote uh, on to accept the above list of donations with much gratitude. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very <coughs> Item 5.2. Consideration to approve the FY. 2021 capital plan it is recommended that the governing board approve the fiscal year 2021 capital plan for submission to the Arizona School Facilities Board. It was in your agenda. Ms. Thompson, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, just that this is a yearly event and uh, Mr. Munoz had the, had the plan attached for you to review um, not only our capital plan, but it includes the anticipated bond improvements as well. Any questions or just is there a motion? I move we accept the uh, capital plan for the submitted the Arizona School Facilities Board. Second. Motion made by Mr. Gwynn, second by Ms. Mellon, to approve or approve the revised compensation package for the 2021 school year. Is that the way you wanted the motion worded? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 5.3. Oh, excuse me, I read the wrong one. But anyway, uh, this one is the recommend of the 2020-21 compensation package. It is recommended the governing board approve the revised compensation package for the 2020-21 school year. Ms. Thompson, do you have anything to add? It was in your packet. Yeah, we bring this um, to you as a governing board anytime we have any change. Um, so it's in the packet unless you have a question about it. Is there a motion? 